They've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, it's Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Great game in the small one in clan battles. Again, I've really enjoyed clan battles this season. I'm not so much a fan of randoms lately with everything going on, and I'll explain to you why. But hey, before we begin, like, subscribe, bell button, love. You love to support the channel. We can't thank you guys enough. We're almost there to 900 subscribers, and I am so flabbergasted that we've uh, literally got almost 100 new subscribers in the last literally a couple weeks here. And that's the fastest we've ever done and that and it's really really shocking to me it's really awesome because we're just having a blast here being very casual and i'm just here to just uh, learn about new things try out new things help you guys make decisions be better players and also build a great community anyways let's talk about it the small end now a reason why i do a video about small and right now during the holiday season is because if you haven't noticed wargaming is doing a lot of stuff to give you guys extra perks which is either reduced premium time uh, cost of, I'm sorry, reduced cost of premium time. The Santa crates are coming out, the Christmas crates, the bundles, everything's going on, as well as they're probably dropping new ships. And this is probably one of the very few times you could maybe potentially even randomly remotely get a chance at getting the small one because it could come in in one of those Christmas crates. Now, it is up to you whether you want to do that or not. It's your money, your time, your uh, resources. It, again, I'm just letting you know that if you want the small one, which I'm featuring right here, which is in its current state, it is still powerful, probably one of the most powerful destroyers in the game if you're a DD main, uh, but it's available out there. Yeah, it may be a very rare and slim chance to get, but it's still a chance, just like in the movie says. So you're saying there's a chance. Yes, there is. So it is your chance to potentially get a small one for you, and I'm going to display some of the small one. Now, I've had one of the comments talk about, hey, you know, you, you do great work uh, talking about the t tactics, techniques, and procedures of what uh, the ship you're playing and what you did right there and what you did wrong, but what about the other side of the uh, the aisle, if you will? Like, who? What about the opponent I'm going one-on-one -on -one against? What could they have done to get out of that situation if uh, I had flipped the roles? If I was going against myself, what would I do to counter that? And we're going to talk about that right now. I can see a lot of it, uh, and that's why I, you kind of play off the weaknesses of the other team or what are the mistakes they've done. So right now we're rushing the team on the flank. This is the strategy I've always built for my team, overpower one side. Uh, focus fire and use your strengths is literally it doesn't matter if your players are good or not It's it's a matter of the fact that you're overwhelming a side just like in real military strategy uh, It's hard to shoot multiple ships and when you single out one It's very difficult to recover no HP or heal or damage con is going to save you from that as well as you're uh, Dispersing the, the wealth if you will because look at how many people have to fire on you against you firing on them so right now We've got the uh, the F Sherman who made a mistake of sitting in the smoke, which you never do in a radar match, especially clan battles. When you know the other team's got radar, you don't sit there and smoke up. That's first mistake number one. Uh, and the good part on us is we have our team that has multiple radars. So you call one radar at a time, and then you bring in the heavy gunboats to clean up and mop up the rest. So this 
Sherman, I know, is slow because I've played it before. It's very slow, very weak in that instance. Maneuverability is terrible. Getting out of a firefight is very difficult, even with fast firing guns. And boom, splash one, RIP back to Porty. He goes down because we also had, not only do we have a radar small and overpowered right there, but then you have a cruiser who also has power. Moscow right there sharing the well with the radar, and that reveals the position of an enemy DD in smoke. There you go. There, so good on us for using tactics and abilities together as a whole poor on the other side because they had in they sat in smoke they didn't maneuver and they didn't coordinate so that's one uh thing you can think about there as a team so we're, again we've capped alpha and bravo napoli is going forward while the others uh charlie let them have the charlie cap it doesn't matter one cap is still less than two and we also have them surrounded with crossfires and numbers so that's the reason why i chose this tactic is you know we bum rush one side uh, you stay together, work together, use your abilities together, and you see the Napoli, all they can do is really just drive towards Alpha and run away, which, like I said, running away by yourself, it, it, it is what it is. Now, we make a mistake as we get stalled at Bravo. Now, I would say from our part, yeah, we can fire as much as we want on the Napoli. It ain't going to do much because our guns, I mean, the Napoli's a little turtle. It has an armored shell that's almost, DDs can't really do much against it. You can't really drive at it with all its sap secondaries. So all I can do right now is really just spot for my team and hold Bravo and maybe potentially make a push to Alpha. Now, the Charlie team, what do they do? They're doing exactly what we're doing. They're staying together. They got a four man versus one, uh, or four ship versus one that is, against uh, our one Shimakaze, which we're at a downfall. So we're kind of doing the same counter tactics on both sides. Really, really good. Now, the problem that I think I see there is their Moscow splits off. Now, I don't know what the Moscow really, uh, the goal or plan was. I'm assuming and speculating that they probably wanted to get the broadsides of ours, but they did not know there's a destroyer right here also stopping this advance. Now, going against a small and in a slow firing cruiser is uh it's iffy it's a 50 50 chance um moscow should fire hp there that's what i would have done instead of ap you got torpedoes coming the way moscow's good has got hydro to see those torpedoes coming in uh and also that has the very very accurate he gun so i have to get a dodge so my counter tactic is i got to run away from the moscow and burn him down that was my goal i get a couple torpedo hits there my other team is put my or the other teammates i have are advancing to alpha to take on the napoli and hold alpha as well if we can my goal right now is to burn the Moscow down and take him out. Now, look at the beautiful thing about the small and fast firing guns. This is exactly what I wish the Delarna was like, but it's not. Uh, the, the small one does a way better job. Uh, the HP pool on the small one, 22,700, eh, it's okay. It's not the greatest, but it's it's kind of the average, if you will. HE shells right there, very good on the Moscow. Very, very accurate. Look what it does. Knocks out the engine, starts to fire. I have to damage Khan. I don't want to lose more health. We also got heals, which is, makes the small one very, very powerful. And look, never stop firing. And the small one, I got one gun in the back. You know what? It's that gun crew that saves the day because if we start a fire on the Moscow, that is damaged for him and very difficult to recover from. The Moscow burns like a kerosene uh, bottle, okay? It literally, it, it, look, it just start fires so easily and it kills him and it slowly withers him away. Very, very frustrating as a Moscow. Nothing you could do there. You really just have to drive away and get out of Dodge. Uh, I would have saved the radar uh, for another day in the Moscow because I know my sh know the ships and know the capabilities. I knew the small one doesn't have smoke. So as a Moscow player, hey, the real, all you can do is drive at the small one and just constantly keep pouring on the hate. So I would say the Moscow shouldn't have turned away. Should have just kept pushing the, the me as a small one. Me, on the other hand, I just keep, uh, yeah, burning fires in Moscow. That's how you, what you do it. Montana in the middle doing a very good job at holding the center and now there's nothing more uh, than, uh, I know that my teammate was uh, Daisy there she uh, could nothing more she could have done uh, other than just hold the middle four versus one uh, is pretty rough so all I can do is drive towards Alpha and see if I can hold two caps now Bravo is the furthest away from the other team I'm not gonna drive towards Charlie there's no point uh, we're almost losing on time we have 10 minutes left they're up by 200 points we have to get a kill, so I'm going to go ahead and drive forward and see if I can help my teammate. I like to help my teammate rather than try to win the game because I think, honestly, it's more enjoyable this way. I actually like working together more than just going solo because, um, really, if I win the game solo, does it really get anything? Not really. I mean, this is a game simulation, so why not try tactics that actually involve working together as players? 
Uh, the thing I like about the small one, uh, before we go into it, if you're thinking about wanting to get it and want to invest into it, the reason why I love it is because it's got a 1.2 second reload. If you get it down close enough, it's an insanely good reload. Two guns. Uh, they don't 360 turn uh, like some other ships do, but it, it's decent. It's got the radar, which makes and breaks this ship. It's what's most what sets it apart uh, from everything else. It's really, really good in that regard. So you can't, if you're a destroyer, you cannot hide. And the DPM guns just melt you. Torpedoes, eh, decent. Maneuverability, eh, decent. Heels are good. Damage cons are good. What really shines is right here what you're going to see. Maneuverability, getting into position, and firing on the Des Moines. Okay, Des Moines is going to burn to crap Well, once I just unload. Look at that. Look at the reload I got there. 1.2 second reload. Getting that thing, burning it down. Des Moines can't do nothing more than just turn its guns and back up. That's probably what I have done, too. I, honestly, if I had to do this, I would probably drive forward to Des Moines to counter this. Because you sitting one still is just an easy target for a small one to burn you down and get you out of the game. Splash 2, RIP, back to Porty, and he is down for the count. And that's a Salem, actually, I'm sorry, that's a Salem. So Salem, Des Moines, same difference, just a uh, different range radar. And a super hill on the Salem part. Uh, the Salem should have probably had a, an extra hill unless you run, ran out of them. Uh, that's why uh, it's difficult to play the Salem sometimes because when you get uh, edgy and want to use that heal, uh, you rely on it too much and uh, eventually you die, succumb to your wounds. So right now we're going to push Alpha because we know we outgun the Hayate at the top and we have a radar to keep him out of smoke. We've got this other ship right now, the Napoli, I believe, running. So we're going to launch some torpedoes into the gap. Hopefully it either hits the GK or the Napoli. That was my strategy. That was a shot in the dark right there. I had no idea what's going to happen, but you know what? We're going to go ahead and cap Alpha because I know the Napoli doesn't have radar and it doesn't have hydro to get us. So we got that advantage here. Hopefully he doesn't spot us uh, right here because otherwise we lose this gun battle. So I have to take a chance. We're going to keep driving, keep driving. Nobody spotted us yet. Nobody spotted. So we got Bravo. We need Alpha. We could potentially stop and slow this game if we kill. Oh, and there it is. That's how we even out the game. Splash three. RIP back to 40. Napoli goes down. That lets a lot of pressure off my shoulders. So all we have to do is contend with a Hayati, which I know I outgun. So do we do this, ladies and gentlemen? Seven minutes left in the game. 800 points or 200 points down. We basically have to take on... We're going to take on the Hayate, or uh, here we go. And we I cannot believe the Hayate did this. Mistake number one, I, the Hayate, I would have totally not have uh, attacked the small one. I would have ran away because I knew I had the HP. I knew I had the time. I don't know what they were thinking. I would have not have done this situation right here and go one-on-one -on -one with a small one. Mistake number one. So drive away, run away at this point. You have two caps to win the game. Uh, me, on the other hand, I made a mistake. I see torpedoes here, and I actually slam in reverse, which is bad because I had the engine boost, which could have gotten me out of dodge. But unfortunately, it's not out of time if you're in reverse. And ouch, there it is. That is the game. And unfortunately, I could not save and carry the team. Four kills, though, in a small and very powerful, very powerful DD. This is the kind of damage you can do in the small end. So hope you guys like the video. Like, subscribe, hit the bell button below. Appreciate all the support. On a way to do 900 subscribers. Almost there. Nine more to go. And until then, hope you guys have a great holiday. And until then, cheers.